Well, another massive Elden Ring patch has dropped 1.04, and with it come more bug fixes and balancing changes to the game. And in this video, we're going to go through what all of those are so you get a better understanding of how the game will play after this patch. There are a couple of new things added. First is the ability to turn off camera auto-rotate. I'm assuming what this means is when the camera rotates slightly when you're like fighting an enemy, it sort of auto-adjusts as you move. That would be fantastic. That can get really annoying sometimes. And additionally, they've added some new event phases to patches. I don't know exactly what these are. I don't know if that means he moves around more or has more things for you to do when you interact with him. We'll just have to see what these are. Obviously, they, they've got to do some testing to find out exactly what this means. Moving along to the balancing changes, it looks like to me that the bulk of these changes, at least in terms of the weapons, have to do with colossal weapons and colossal swords and the damage that they deal and the attack speed that they attack as well as their recovery times. I'm assuming this is a shift to try and get away from the jump dual wield meta and in order to get people to use single colossal weapons a bit more frequently. So if you've been looking to use a colossal weapon or you're using a colossal weapon setup, your build probably just got a lot better. Also, it looks like they've buffed the Grafted Blade Greatsword specifically as well as the Devourer's Scepter to increase their damage. Another pretty big change here is the fact that they've reduced the status effect buildup on spells and incantations if you're using the Albernic Staff or the Dragon Communion Seal. These two weapons have Arcane Scaling, meaning that you can play an Arcane Spellcaster with them. So the benefit of that was that you could build up status effects more easily when casting spells while using these. So now that's been tapered off a little bit, or it's a little bit of a nerf to kind of make it a little less powerful compared to other, you know, seals and staffs. Another change is that they've decreased the effect of the Great Shield Talisman for weapons with high block rate. I'm assuming what that means here is that they've reduced the amount of guard boost this provides to weapons with high guard boost. So that you can't abuse some sort of high guard boost weapon as a shield while still blocking, you know, most of the damage. I don't know exactly how much this is nerfed, obviously. And a huge change for PvP fans out there is that the length of the Madness Affliction animation has been shortened, and the speed of recovering from Madness buildup is faster. This is going to make it harder for you to gain the Madness status effect in PvP. I know a lot of people were abusing this, so hopefully there is some improvement there on that front. And the last major change here is it looks like Endurance and Mind are gaining a buff to how much FP and stamina they provide at lower levels. If you didn't know, Mind really starts to take off about level 30 or so in terms of the amount of FP you gain per point. So by reducing that, it's going to make you have more FP at lower levels, which is great because I think most people don't have the points to invest heavily in Mind. So getting some more FP there early is great. And also, it's the same situation with stamina because the Endurance stat doesn't provide typically enough stamina to justify the points. If they buff this, then maybe it will. Going through the list of spells and incantations that have been buffed here, you can see they did about half of them in the game. They increased the effectiveness. They either reduced the, you know, recovery time or increased the cast speed or, you know, made it deal more damage. And that is fantastic because as anyone who's played this game, you know, a while realizes there are just some meta spells that are really good that go into every build and all the other ones have been kind of tough to use or very, very situational. So this, again, should expand the repertoire of spells that people can use. A lot of these spells I've tried using in my builds specifically that just didn't work out. One of them I've been trying to make work really, really well is Briars of Punishment. I'm really glad to see that the recovery time is shortened and that the blood loss buildup has been increased. It's really hard to set bleeding with this spell, which is the whole bonus of this spell, so I can't wait to test this out. I mean, this change right here to all the spells really shows me that From Software is paying attention to what the fan base wants. They see the need for these. This is a big, big change, and we already had one round, and this is desperately, desperately needed. Just about every spell in the game that you don't use right now, you're probably going to want to go pick up and check out again because its damage is either boost. You can cast it faster, which was the, the downside to a lot of these spells. Like, uh, people keep asking me for a Dragon Lightning, you know, build, and one of the reasons I haven't done it is because the cast time is just too long for most of these spells to use them in any sort of aggressive boss fight. Well, I want to go check them out now and see how much better they perform. Another big change to a spell here is Duelist Moonblade. This is one that you'll find in our Freezing Battle Mage build. It's a very, very popular spell, has very, very high damage, and it can hit multiple times. Well, the damage of that is now reduced, and the performance of it is supposed to be evened out so that it's not hitting multiple times when it shouldn't, but that it is hitting multiple times when it makes sense. I don't know exactly how this is all going to play out, 
but it shouldn't i'm hoping what this means is it doesn't matter what hand you cast it in now because previously i guess if you cast it in the left hand it would hit more than if you cast it in the right i'm hoping that's been sorted out so that doesn't matter anymore a big nerf that people shouldn't be surprised of is swarm of flies this spell is absolutely absurd with the blood loss buildup that it does and the ability to just stagger enemies um, the blood loss buildup on this has been reduced the fact that the you know dragon communion seals blood loss buildup has been nerfed as well in combination with this means that swarm of flies is probably going to be much much less effective you haven't seen this in too many of my builds just because uh you know it's kind of a late game item unless you you know skip the, skip ahead and do a quest line that puts you in a very dangerous area but also it kind of takes the challenge out of just about any fight if you just throw this over and over and over because it tracks the enemy staggers them blood loss you really don't have to do anything other than cast this spell Additionally, the Flame of Frenzy and Frenzied Burst have their madness buildup decreased as well. And again, with the Dragon Communion Seal being reduced in effectiveness, um, these spells aren't going to produce as much madness buildup at all. So this, again, is probably going to be really good change for PvP where this was being abused. So if you're a PvP player, hopefully that's good for you. When it comes to the weapon skills adjustments, you're going to see a lot of them, again, that are absent from a lot of my builds because they simply aren't that great they're getting buffed. So this is going to be, you know, really important because I do a lot of testing with weapon skills, seeing what works and what doesn't. I have a couple of these actually planned on my list. Like for instance, Black Flame Tornado is what I spent a lot of time testing with and it just, you just get staggered out of it. Well, now the fact that you can roll out of the animation, prevent yourself from getting hit is huge. And also adding a hitbox for the weapon should increase the damage this thing does significantly. I'm also really looking forward to like carrying greatsword and carrying grander, increasing the cast speed recovery time of these and the damage. I mean, these were just not worth it because landing an attack with them has been really, really difficult to do because you have to charge them up. The enemy has to basically not move. But by increasing the speed of these and reducing the recovery time, increasing the damage, they might be worth it now. So I really can't wait to, you know, dive into that more and test those out. Another really good buff here is Aochade's Dancing Blade. You saw this in our Executioner. Uh, Aochid Executioner build using this. One of the problems with this is sometimes the enemy would actually get knocked backward out of the range of the blade, particularly if you're using the Regalia of Aochid. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen anymore and you can just get the full damage cast to this every time, which would be great. Another big change here, Moonlight Greatsword, decreased the FP cost. It was like 40 FP before, increased the cast speed, increased recovery time, increased the frost buildup. So that's huge. I mean, the Moonlight Greatsword just got even better. I thought it was fantastic before, but now it's even better. You know, looking down this list of weapon skills, most of these I don't have in my builds with, you know, maybe a handful of exceptions because they just weren't strong enough in my testing. I haven't tested every single one of these, but I've tested probably three quarters of these. And in my experience, they either weren't worth using or you had to make a very specialized build, which is fine. But I think a lot more of these are going to be, you know, worth using. And I can't wait to try them out again and see if they can, you know, become viable because that opens up the door to a lot more builds. When it comes to bug fixes, the ones that really jump out at me first is the carry and retaliation bug. If you didn't know, you could use carry and retaliation to deal like, I don't know, 8 to 10, 12,000 damage in one trigger because of the way damage was calculating. This was obviously bugged. Um, I only mentioned it in my Frost Knight build because I saw it was a thing that you could do, but I didn't make my build around it. There are a lot of, you know, busted builds out there that revolve around using this, and now this has been patched, so that will not probably function nearly as well as before. Another bug fix that I'm really, really happy to see, one that's been annoying me a lot, is the Renala Queen of the Full Moon fight where when you're co-oping, you can't help the host sometimes, like the shield remains up even when she drops to the ground, or you can't see or attack the enemies that have the shields around them. That is a pretty glaring bug, so I'm really glad that's going to be fixed because that'll affect basically anyone who's co-oping that fight. It says here that there was a bug preventing players from entering the boss arena after defeating Morgoth, Omen King. I, that is one that, like, I have never experienced i didn't even know was a bug but that's huge because that could potentially be a game-breaking bug so it's good to see that on the list another bug fix i think people will be happy with is the edgar the revenger one and festering fingerprint bike uh, apparently you these guys didn't invade you after you defeated all the bosses and learning at the lake well now they should again and so if you want like bike spear for instance you can go get it so make sure to go check those invasions out locations of them should be on the wiki so if you don't remember where they were and you want to go pick those up now, make sure you do that. There are also other a bunch of other bug fixes regarding other quest lines for other NPCs. So if you've been having trouble with a quest line with a particular NPC, you might want to go check it out after this update and see if it's working now. A couple other miscellaneous bug fixes. They fixed a bug that made the scythe weapon lose blood loss when poison affinity was applied to it. 
That's an annoying bug. Glad they fixed that. Apparently Iron Greatsword was doing lower damage than expected when Affinity is applied. That weapon already slaps so hard that's incredible. We actually used that in our Hellfire Herald build, so that should get even stronger. That's nuts. And apparently Night Comet was consuming more FP when casting it while charged. That's a bug. I thought that was supposed to work that way. Uh, if you use our Dark Knight build, this is a spell we use. But that should be even more effective now because you'll use a lot less FP. Charging that increases the damage a lot, so that's really good to do. And besides that, it looks like they increased online multiplayer stability, which is great. I disconnect, I don't know, between 50 to 70% of my summons. So I'm hoping that number, even if it went down by 10%, would be a huge improvement for me. And it says other all, you know, other performance improvements and bug fixes. Obviously, we don't know exactly what that means. The performance on PC still remains an issue for me personally. I still get massive frame drops here and there. I've just kind of learned to live with it. But if that could be improved even just a few frames here and there, that would be great. So what do you guys think of these balancing changes and bug fixes? I think this is another banger patch by From Software. There aren't really too many nerfs, which I think is what everyone was scared of. Typically in the past, From has been heavy handed with nerfs, you know, absolutely gutting builds. I don't think really anything's getting gutted here much, except for madness PVP players that are abusing that, which frankly, I don't care. That's fine. So are you happy with the changes? Are you unhappy with the changes? Do you like the direction the game is going? What do you want to see them patch in future updates? Let us know in the comments below.